Welcome back to Belhara, the birth story of a biotech podcast. I'm Jeff Yonker, your host and the CEO of Belhara Therapeutics. I'm excited to continue our story today. In this episode, I'm joined by Tom Lavodi from Versant Ventures and Jeremy Caldwell from Red Tree Venture Capital. Jeremy was previously with Versant Ventures and led Inception Therapeutics, the incubator arm of Versant. Tom and Jeremy are two of the folks who played a key role in turning the breakthrough scientific ideas that were bubbling up from Chris Parker and John Todaro at Scripps and ultimately form a company around it. Tom is managing director of Versant Ventures. Until October of 2023, Jeremy was a venture partner at Versant as well as the CEO of Inception Therapeutics. Tom's also a member of Belhar's board of directors. So now, back to our story, this time with the chapter from Tom and Jeremy. Really pleased to have both Jeremy and Tom joining um, and uh, going to dig in a lot to some of the things that everybody's wondering about, uh, including how this became a company, right? Because this was an academic uh, platform and, and had a lot of interesting ideas swirling and all of a sudden it just sort of took off. But you guys were there and sort of uh, had the choice to kind of let's put some money to work and actually turn this into a company. And so we're going to talk about that today. Uh, we're also going to talk about the name, um, which uh, has got a good uh, uh, sort of origin story. Um, but why don't we start with first introducing you? We, we, we're a small enough company. We do everything on first name basis here, but why don't we give us a little sense of who you are and, and kind of how you got to uh, what you're doing today. Sure, yeah, no problem. So I'll, I'll start off. Jeremy Caldwell, I'm the CEO of Inception Therapeutics, also a venture partner with Versant Ventures, and I've been in this role for about five years. It was after about a 20-year career in you know, R&D, both pharma, biotech, a little bit of VC, and I've always been attracted to new company creation. So when I had the opportunity to work with you know, the Versant team and run Inception, which is the incubator that you know, spins out companies from our San Diego labs, it was the uh, you know, opportunity of a lifetime. And so that's a little bit about me. Yeah. Excellent. Tom? And Tom Lavoda, I'm a managing director with Versant. I've been with the firm for 20 years. Yeah. Quite some time. My CV is not as interesting as Jeremy's. You qualified for pension yet? That's, that's impressive. <laughs> I get that. uh, but it's been an interesting opportunity. So uh, started in the Bay Area with First and then moved to Switzerland. Actually, we were there for almost a decade, and then in 2019 moved here to San Diego, working really closely with Jeremy and also Richard. Uh, Inception, where Jeremy is the CEO, is what we call a discovery engine. So it's a team of highly talented scientists. Uh, chemist biologists, we actually have wet labs uh, at, at, the, at the site, and so we can really get our hands dirty working with early academic science, figuring out what's real and what's not, and which ones really uh, merit investing in and trying to build a company like, like Belhara. Yeah. So we're going to, this is important because I want to I wanna talk a little bit about how you do what you do because I think a little bit of that context helps in understanding how Belcar Belhara came to be. And then we can talk a little bit about the specifics of, of how that all happened. So both of you are PhD, trained scientists, mm -hmm. um, but not working at the bench in, anymore and haven't for quite a long time, both your cases. <laughs> totally so, better so, off that way. <laughs> 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 the world's safer, right? Yeah. Um, but, but no, but seriously, so, so how, how would you characterize why you're doing what you're doing now? I mean, you mm -hmm. gave me the how, you know, the what you're doing, but, mm -hmm. but what, with the backgrounds you have, what drew you to doing the company formation, the company funding and formation that you're doing? Um, and what, what is it about it that really kind of drew you in? I mean, for me, uh, the excitement about you know, new ideas and being able to transform you know, science and medicine through those ideas by you know, capitalizing those ideas so that they can actually deliver something important. Uh, the science is always really you know, of high interest, but then also you know, the ability to you know, create medicines and you know, return, uh, you know, make you know, returns for, for the VCs and other stakeholders is, is a lot of fun. But it's really the science, I think, that, that drives us and the excitement. And that's, um, and, you know, at Inception and Versant, you know, we go and scout out great new breakthrough ideas largely coming out of academia. And usually it's uh, an idea you know, from a professor's lab, uh, the kernel of, of some concept that we can then you know, transform into a, a living, breathing biotech company. So mm -hmm. it's actually really exciting going from just an idea to you know, something like a Belhara, a living, breathing you know, company that's you know, writing the history in chemoproteomics. So I think that's, that's uh, largely you know, what, what, what drives us, but I'm, I'm sure it's different for everybody. Yeah. 
How about you, Tom? Yeah, so for me, we've really seen the evolution of the investment model since I've you know, been, again, been with the first for 20 years. I was actually the first PhD that joined the firm way back when. Wow. And, um, you know, the model was really pretty different. The, the model, I would say back then, I, what I would characterize a little more of a passive model. And what I mean by that was, that was, it was a little bit different time in the industry, not quite as robust, you know, not as many firms around. And it was a little bit kind of the network. You know, mm -hmm. we found deals through the network and that was how. And, and versus back then, it was, it was pretty different firm it was biotech was part of what we did but there was healthcare IT there was medical yeah. devices so we were healthcare focused but you know not today it's all biotech all early stage all company creation and so the word Jeremy used was scout you know and that's really important the way I would characterize our investment model today is a very active model yeah. what I mean by that is we don't wait for stuff to come to us we go out there and we find it and inception is really the evolution of that mm -hmm. um, where it, it's it's so active that we actually are running experiments in the labs with chemists and biologists and interacting with academics as, yeah. as Jeremy talked about so for me that's been a real joy kind of seeing the evolution. So let's talk a little more about that then. So so you're out scouting, you mentioned academic labs as a big source of, of some of the innovation you're looking for. And you know, you're kind of looking, I would guess, for just that certain fingerprint, right? This is something that looks like it's got scientific legs, it looks like it has sort of an investment thesis you can rally behind. What what how would you characterize that? Like what what does sort of what is that sort of ideal that you're looking for given that you're doing a lot of pretty early stage and, and mm -hmm. incubation of companies? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So um, there are a number of things that we look for in uh, you know the seed or kernel of a new company. You know, the first is you know just the idea and how uh, new it is, how expansive it is, uh, and you know, just the, the breadth of the potential of, of the idea. You know, so we want to know if it's actually been reduced to practice already, and you know that's a big differentiator in terms of how we you know invest in these uh, different ideas. Also, you know, what's the if it's a platform which we you know tend to uh, be attracted to? You know, what's the breadth? How many opportunities is it? One or two, or are there hundreds? to choose from. Yeah. Um, the other big thing is you know, star power. I mm -hmm. mean, who's involved? Are they people that everyone likes to work with that have kind of been there and done that, that yeah. understand how to build a biotech company? And it's always you know, easier to work with folks like that. Um, and, and, and that, I think, really helps to facilitate the build of a company, attracting you know, the right you know, kind of talent and, and launching the companies. But there are also you know, business factors that are you know, yeah. really you know, critical, too. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think Jeremy, I think summed it up well. I mean, the three words that come to mind from your innovation, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to do something that's in incremental. It's got to be different. It's got to, you know, uh, every biotech company in a way builds on what's come before. Yeah. Uh, but it really has to be, you know, the, it's pushing their boundary, pushing the horizon in, in an exciting new direction. Credibility, you know, that's yeah. uh, th that's really important. That you know, we're working with people that have experience and done it before, and we can trust and rely on them. That is an element of the Inception Labs. It's really important. You know, it's uh, as we know, not every paper that's published in Science and Nature is reproducible. And so, yeah. Yeah. a key element of the Inception model is the fact that we can reproduce or not the yeah. science in our own hands and figure out if it really works or not. Yeah. And then scope, kind of as Jeremy mentioned, like is this something that's really narrowly focused, or can you envision that this is something that could really grow and you know create a pipeline of opportunities and become a very significant company over time? Yeah. Um, yeah. The good part about getting and on the early stage, the kind of the, the financing model, that's all things we can figure out. You know, it doesn't come to us prepackaged. Yeah, we want to make sure that whatever the idea is, that we're not the only ones that are interested in it. You know, right. we want to you know do something that has you know, broad appeal also, because we like to partner with pharma to help build the companies. And ultimately, when we syndicate, you know, which is you know what we do you know, further down the line, we want to make sure that it's something that you know other investors are going to want to participate in, because you know to build these companies, it requires you know, capital, and yeah. uh, we can't do that all on our own. So yeah. it really is a partnership. The other thing we look for um, is you know, what would be the unfair advantage? We don't want to build Me Too companies. I mean, right. there are 20 companies in the protein degradation space, for instance. There are you know, dozens of cell therapy companies. Yeah. Uh, and you know, in the case of Belhar, we were looking for you know, what's the you know, unfair advantage that we have in you know, a chemoproteomics space. It's the technology, and it's the people, and yeah. a number of other factors that come into uh, describing how, how we can carve out the space. So let's, let's sort of maybe begin to, to bring in the Belhara story. And, and there's, 
there's a couple places that we could start because there were sort of converging threads, I think, that, that brought the company together. But let's start with the sort of Chris and John piece because that was a dialogue um, that, that I know started a lot of the discussion. So um, how did that begin, right? So you, you've got you know, these two junior faculty, first-time co-founders, off doing like a Skunk Works almost project, but one that got you know, a pretty good visibility pretty quickly. Yeah. How did it come onto your radars and, and sort of you know, what mm -hmm. were your initial impressions? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you know Ben is on our. He's the chair of our scientific advisory board at Inception, mm -hmm. and so when he started to see you know what John and Chris were doing start to really coalesce into a potential company, mm -hmm. he reached out to us and said, "Hey, you guys should really meet you know with John and Chris," and you made the introduction, and then you know as soon as we saw you know what they were putting together, you know, it was like a big aha moment. This was like the next generation. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the chemoproteomic space, and mm -hmm. uh, it was—it's it, one of those companies that it was so clear that we had to do this. But you weren't the only ones, right? I mean, so that was part of the mix, right? right? Is yeah, that, the, it, the it, timing of how this all came together was really interesting. So, so a couple elements there. So, one, uh, you know, we were early investors in Vividion, working pretty closely with Ben on building that company, and that. You know, that really was a, you know, a frontier pushing company because, you know, covalent chemistry, not that long ago, you know, I'm a chemist by training and many hardcore medicinal chemists in the industry, if you tell them I'm going to make a covalent molecule, they laugh you out of the room. That's yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. Ben and Vividian changed that. You know, mm -hmm. covalent chemistry is here to stay, cysteine chemistry is here to stay, and, and Vividian really was the company that, 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 that blazed that trail. Yes. So Vividian at that time was maturing, and it turns out, six months later, we'd end up selling that company to Bayer, but we could kind of see that whole technology was maturing. So it was kind of in light of what we were experiencing at Vividian that this new idea comes in. And, mm -hmm. and what we recognized immediately, Jeremy and the team pointed out was, this goes beyond, you know, yeah. Vividion is powerful as it ha is and has been and continues to be, Vividion is focused on cysteine chemistry, you know, cysteine residue has to be there in the, at the site of the protein that you yeah. want to find a ligand to. Belhara removes that constraint. Belhara yeah. can do this anywhere on yeah. the backbone of the protein. And when we saw that, we said, wow, I mean, this, this really does take any other, we talked about innovation, you really have to take a quantum step. And that is a yeah. quantum step to remove that restriction, be able to find ligands anywhere on the backbone of the protein. So kind of in the, in the, the arc of the development of chemoproteomics, that was a really interesting time. But it was also an interesting time because John and Chris were being pursued by a pharma company. Mm -hmm. which is a little bit of a unique, you know, it's not often VC in a way is the middleman between academia mm -hmm. and pharma. Usually academic innovation goes into a biotech company. It's too early for pharma to really care about. The role of biotech and VCs is to build these into something more interesting and then pharma acquires it, one that's either on the way in the clinic or in the clinic. But in this case, there were three pharma companies knocking on the door of, of uh, Chris and John. And they had term sheets on the table with right. real dollars, yeah. like seven-figure dollars. So the, yeah. you know, this was a really attractive offer to them. And they were mulling this over. Mm, are we going to do a new co, or am I going to take this this deal here? Yeah. And I remember very. So I was actually in Big Bear over on a weekend, and I remember <laughs> this conversation with John, where I was like, John, don't do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't, you know, forget about that. Come launch this company with us. And yeah. he, I, he felt the, the enthusiasm. He felt the vision. And, and, and we, we ended up obviously now you know, yeah. launching the company together. So there was kind of a number of elements coming together timing-wise that were pretty interesting, kind of how they all played off each other. And you know, where we are now, um, in, in hindsight, you know, really glad that it's come together uh, the way it has. So, so one, again, there's a couple of great threads I want to tug on there. So, so you know, one of the ways that we will sometimes describe what we're doing um, is sort of maybe 75% standing on the shoulders of these other chemoproteomics companies, yeah. right, mm -hmm. who have really blazed the trail and validated, right, that this is an approach that works, it's productive, it's getting drugs into the clinic, um, I think it's going to produce medicines, um, and 25% differentiated, but that 25% is really meaningful. Yeah. Um, and you weren't the only investors that actually had previous experience and, and were also in the mix here. Um, so what, what was the, you made a pitch um, that worked um, to both build a company, but also to work with you, um, to work with Versa and to work with Inception and kind of get Chris and John to do that. Because yeah. as you just said, they had multiple options. So what, what do you think hooked them, right? What, what was it that, that sort of made them make that, yeah. that choice? I think, you know, the, the beauty of the Inception model, you know, we talked about um, the ability to really kick the tires on science. But there, there's another element of it that I think is 
just as if not more important, and that's the enablement. Yeah. And so when academic, we've been in this situation, now, so that, that you're true, in the case of the early days of Bulhara, there were other investors around the table who really wanted to get in. There, yeah. We've been in that situation in other cases as well, where the real differentiating factor is the fact that we have a team of 25, yeah. 30 scientists that are ready to go. You yeah. know, and if you work with us, mm -hmm. the next day, you've got a yeah. team of chemists and biologists pushing these things forward versus, a slightly more traditional way of doing this is, okay, I'm going to go rec recruit a C-suite, and then, yeah. then they're going to build a team, and 12 months Eventually, later, yeah. you're doing experiments. You know, literally, yeah. on the next day, we're doing experiments. But the unique and differentiating capability of Inception to have a team that's ready to go, you know, the, the scalability of the company creation process, I think, is a real differentiator. Yeah. And, and also, you know, uh, the, the people factor. I mean, um, you know, we were able to engage, you know, with John and Chris, you know, at a personal and scientific level, you know, the, the energy was palpable. You know, mm -hmm. they could feel it, we could feel it. They saw this is their baby, and this is a group, you know, that they're gonna trust to actually make, you know, something out of this. Yeah. And I think that really helped to, you know, catalyze, you know, the whole thing. It's interesting with the conversation that we had with Chris and John, because in some ways I think you inadvertently played to some of their deep wiring, which is, you know, both uh, I don't know if much you know this, but both coming out of working class backgrounds, Rust Belt states, yeah. you know, sort of um, truly, you know, kind of breaking ground in their families and in yeah. their communities by being, you know, kind of world class uh, scientists. And I think that the idea of doing something that was going to be harder mm -hmm. and something that was going to take longer was actually sort of resonating Resonate with them. Yeah. That, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we should work at this. We should yeah. build something bigger, yeah. right? And, and so uh, the quick win, I think, actually was not as appealing to them, despite the fact there would have been a big, big paycheck yep. you know, associated with that. They wanted to play for a longer game. I have to so. chuckle because I remember at the first Belhara holiday party, you uh -huh. know, the whole, all the families were yeah. together. Yeah. And I went over, John was at the John table with John and, uh, and his wife, and so I went over I say, hey, John, you sure you made the right decision? And John's like, absolutely. <laughs> I look over at his wife. She's like, yeah. <laughs> Time will see. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, and it's, uh, I mean, in, in all candor, it's, it's part of uh, what drew me to the company. It's also part of the burden I feel like we bear, right, is, is we've been entrusted with something that, that actually has yeah. much greater potential than what we've done so far, and we yeah. have an obligation to kind of do that. Yeah, totally. So um, it's, a, it's a motivator in a way. Ben was already in the mix, obviously, yeah. as, as, uh, as, as Chris had done his postdoc in his lab. But Stuart, you know, another marquee name. Um, how did that sort of, does that, is that a plus factor? I mean, totally. you've got, you know, track records, obviously, yeah. but sometimes, sometimes track records, you know, come with prima donna egos, or I mean, you obviously yeah. knew Ben well and Stuart too enough to know that's not it. But I mean, did it, did it raise sort of the, the sort of viability of Belhara when you get to sort of real heavy hitters like yeah, that? Yeah, I, I think, and what's unique about this is that Ben and Stuart have a long working relationship together. They work yeah. on a bunch of, I mean, that's yeah. a really close symbiotic relationship between yeah. the two of them. Yeah. We've worked with Stuart a bit, don't know him as well as Ben, but mm -hmm. we've done a little bit with Stuart. You know, I would argue, uh, the, the two godfathers of chemoproteomics are Ben and Stewart. Yeah, so it's like if you get the two absolute best involved yeah. in your company, why wouldn't you? And, yeah. and it was honestly, that was really kind of Ben's relationship with Stewart. Kind yeah. of as this was coming together, mm -hmm. Ben was the one who came to the table and said, you guys, you know, like getting Stewart involved here would probably be a pretty good thing to do. And yeah. we all was like, yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That may have also gone into John and Chris's calculus about doing Belhara when they saw, hey, this is going to be with Ben, who's you know, created great companies, and Stewart also lived legend you know to be able to kind of you know learn the craft of yep. you know biotech you know company formation because knowing these guys you know they've got more than one up their sleeve uh, over their careers I'm struck by the fact that there's um, there's a sort of almost tension in, in sort of two of the motivators that go around I think the whole team here which is there's a sense of urgency but there's also patience right which mm -hmm. is they're not actually uh, dynamically you know independent um, that people want to do something significant, yeah. Um, yeah. but they also want to get it going, right? Yeah. And so I think yeah. that it's each edition of this puzzle. So, all right, so you're at the point now where you have gotten Chris and John and Ben and Stuart, and you can convince them that this sort of you know, inception model is gonna be the right place to get this ramped. Um, you're ready to write a check. You write a big one, yep. uh, maybe one of the biggest uh, Series A's that you've written, yeah. and solo, right? Yeah. So you all are all in. All in. Um, Absolutely. Any hesitations on that one or no, just no? It's, no, it's, you know, what we saw come together, I mean, this is a pretty unique opportunity. The, the constellation of people, yeah. the validity of the science, the potential, the, you know, we know the chemical proteomics field pretty well. You know, it was, I mean, as Jeremy said, like when this 
came together was kind of, of course we're going to do this. It's yeah. a bit of a no-brainer, you know, and the, and the really to take the next step, the, you know, the moving beyond cysteine chemistry to, to really be able to go anywhere on, on the backbone of a protein. That, you know, we saw them and we said, well, this is going to be really powerful. And it's also a time where this type of, of company was recognized in the investment community. So yeah. we were confident that, you know, and then also we'll get to the partners and, and we were confident that, you know, and this goes even further. Mm -hmm. We ought to be able to help fund this company with non dilutive capital from a meaningful pharma partnership. So all that was coming together, and you're right, it was the biggest check we had written at that point for a Series A. We've you know we've invested more in other companies, but for a Series A, 50 million in just ourselves, that it's was a lot bet. of conviction. Yeah. A lot of conviction. But yeah. hindsight, we made the right. You're still feeling good about it. That's that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a big selling feature, and in kind of retrospect, you know, Chris and John had kind of done a lot of the BD legwork, you know, for yeah, the company true. and talking right. to you know, partners, and then, you know, bringing that to us to you know carry carry it the rest of the way. I mean, you know, to have you know multiple pharma companies interested in the first target that came out of the platform and the platform itself. I yeah. mean, and I think we didn't need that kind of you know. Uh, you know, on the checklist. Yeah. Um, now somebody's got to stick a name There's on a it. Theme, yeah. <laughs> There's a theme. Yeah. How did that? How did that come to pass? So, of, uh, so Belhara is this rare beast <laughs> that lies off the coast of southern France. Yeah. It's a it's a big wave surf spot. Um, it breaks maybe once a year. Some years it doesn't break because the, just the right elements have to come together. There's got to be a massive storm to make the swell that big. It's a it's a reef underwater reef that's far off the coast of France that only when the swells are big enough do the waves actually break and they're massive. They're 80, 100 foot monsters that break out there. And so it's kind of a little bit this unique constellation of things coming together at just mm -hmm. the right moment to create that opportunity. You know, it's, yep. it's going big. It's this unique constellation of things coming together. It's also this idea that this is not a weekend adventure. You know, this is yep. not your average weekend surfer paddling out and yep. catching some waves at La Jolla Shores. Right. This right. is a highly skilled group of folks who've done it before, know yep. what they're doing. They're, they're tackling the biggest, scariest things out there but they have the experience to know how to do it. So yeah. it's kind of really all those, you know, that name I think is a pretty cool name because it really captures all, all of those elements. Yeah, what is, and we would agree, and, and we certainly enjoyed sort of assuming that mantle, um, and it's distinctive, as you said. Was there any debate or argument over whether that was the right name? Or there were it? other names, but, you know, and, and we wanted to make sure the founders were excited about it too. So yeah. we, you know, had, had it narrowed down. We asked, uh, you know, John and Chris, actually, uh -huh. you know, what their favorite was, and, you know, Bell Harbor. They vetoed La Jolla Shores. That wasn't <laughs> yeah. I, I've got the list. I found an old email no with kidding. the list. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay, all right, tell us. There were some others, but Bell Hara just sounded the best. Yeah. And then, you know, when you look it up on, you know, the internet, Wikipedia, and you see the big the wave, it's it. like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's it. Yeah. 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 Fortunately, you know, Chris and John both liked it, and the team has really taken to the name, too. I remember when we were incubating the company at Inception, we ran out of places to put surfboards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I did. Well, and I was going to go there next, because um, so you, you, you um, one of your, you know, sort of, um, probably less advisable moves was to invite us to start cohabitating with you. Um, so let's talk about how, how that went and how, how quickly that jumped the rails. Um, but yeah, no, it's true. We do we, we do have a sort of surf culture to the team. And, and in fact, when we found the space that we're in now, um, that was one of the primary selling points is we had a surf rack uh, yeah. and, and, uh, and it's now full, uh, yeah. quite full with, with sticks. So, um, but uh, so you, you so yeah, so at the point that I jumped into the party, um, you invited us to start to uh, you know, sort of borrow lab space and office space and kind of kind of build. And um, so talk a little bit about that and kind of how quickly you regretted that decision. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in retrospect, it was great because, uh, I mean, of course, everyone was excited about Belhara. Again, it was one of those companies that just kind of sold itself. It jumped right out of the page. And, uh, you know, a lot of people at Inception, you know, being you know, part of the, you know, the build of the company kind of fell in love with it. And so, uh, and some want to actually join forces and, and become part of it. So, you know, and, and that's actually a great recognition of the potential of the company. And we also want to populate the companies with, you know, the, the, the top talent. And so, you know, I think, I don't know how many people from, from Inception joined Belhara, but it's at least yeah. 10, maybe 12. Yeah. 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 And then also people that we had been recruiting to Inception yep. heard about Belhara <laughs> and joined Belhara instead. Yeah. 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 So, but I mean, it's, uh, it, it's been great. And you guys were camping out in one of our conference rooms and, 
you know, yeah. wreaking all sorts of havoc. Yeah. So, <laughs> what thirty people crammed? Uh, we had thirty people crammed in the conference the room. room. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, um, it, I mean, it's easy because it was it was a it was a high energy time, right? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really dynamic. I loved it. Yeah. I loved the yeah. energy in the building. It's you know, the, it's a, I don't know what thirty foot ceiling uh, yeah. the building, but to have it just full of yeah. energy. So now Jeremy had to deal with, there were two other companies, uh, Seawolf and yeah. Nighthawk, I think, yeah. incubating at the same time in the building. Yeah. Pretty soon, Belhara just <laughs> expanded. And so Jeremy had it's to like deal that big with wave. Yeah. the, the Nighthawkians and the Seawolfians, like these Belhara people are- yeah, No, no, so, the, so, the, so, the, the sharp yeah. elbows over, Traffic, over back yeah, space yeah, yeah, yeah. got uh, pretty aggressive. But so. I didn't have to deal with any of that, so I just, I loved it. Yeah, I felt like the landlord. Oh, I, heard I didn't sign up for that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I remember seeing like t tape stripes on the benches of like, stay off this our line, space. right? You know, like, all right, <laughs> might be time to get our own space. Um, yeah. But it, no, I think you're absolutely right too about another factor um, about the way we were able to grow the company and pretty quickly was we got fortunate to be able to pull a handful of relatively freestanding teams mm -hmm. from a few different places, you know, folks that are like, gosh, I want to move and do this. And then people followed them, right? right. And so we had that with Justin and some of the Belhara team. Um, and we had that as well with Sherry and mm -hmm. with, Jared, with, uh, mm -hmm. with Gary. And so um, you know, that, that's, that's also, I think, part of that secret sauce is that you get that, that sort of buzz going, mm -hmm. you know, and then people want to be a part of it and it becomes a bit, you know, kind of magnetic. And yeah. I think we wouldn't be where we are if we hadn't been able to get a handful of those teams to say, yeah, yeah let's do this, right? Yeah. You know, and not just one person, but let's, yep. let's, like, let's, get, let's keep yep. the band together. Yeah, right? they've and, worked together already. So there's yeah. real momentum that carries yeah. forward into the company. Absolutely. Absolutely, because I mean, it's I mean, the chemistry team, and again, I, I mean, saying thank you um, mm -hmm. is is that having a chemistry team that, that had worked with Justin for quite a while and knew what they were doing and knew how to do it together, and you, know, right. you don't have to do a lot of that getting to know one another. You can just hit the ground running. Yep, yep. Hot um, start. And and they were already working on the library, right? Which is um, another piece of this. Um, that was one of the decisions you all made pretty early in, mm -hmm. in sort of this process was let's start spending some of the dollars on library creation. Right. And so you know, both of you with your backgrounds, I'm just curious, do you remember those conversations and kind of how you thought about building this proprietary library, which yeah. I think has become one of our cornerstones yeah. of kind of the, the kind of yeah. defensibility of this, this, this yeah. platform. I think there, I think we have to give a nod to Vivian because that's what we learned. You know, there, there's, what's interesting is there are pharma companies that have chemistry departments that have been around for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And they've had libraries that have been around for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so with the, there was, we're kind of at this point in time where companies like Bavidian, great job, like Belhara, have the opportunity to incorporate really new ideas, new chemistry. What's always, always blown me away is these don't need to be massive libraries. You know, a lot of people kind of build these 50, 100,000 larger member libraries. Yeah. We learned of Bavidian, two, 3,000, kind of when we got up to that level, 4,000, carefully crafted mm -hmm. molecules, yep. you start finding novel, really important hits yeah. Yeah. on proteins that matter. And so, you, you know, it's not a decade endeavor. You can build a library yeah. of that size thoughtfully in a number yeah. of months and have a real competitive advantage in the area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that becomes the company jewels, the yeah. special sauce that no one else can touch. I also got to hand it to Justin, you know, who's a true dyed in the wool drug hunter. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, he, he had the insight that, you know, these are libraries that are coming out of academia, you know, the proof of concept libraries out of Chris's lab, you know, Justin wanted to make them more, you know, drug-like. And so he was able to kind of merge the principles from, you know, the, uh, from Chris's lab with, you know, uh, more of a, like a, a drug discovery mindset. And, you know, the libraries are just, you know, jamming right now. So that, that was a good insight. Good to have that kind of experience to, to help to shape the, the Belhara Library and make it yeah. what it is today. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, I mean, I think that the the way that it's going, I think, is validating, right? That that both the Vividian approach, the decision to build the proprietary library the way we did, and it's, it's I mean, a year in, it's just lighting up all kinds of proteins that yep. have really been sort of unligandable, right, yep. um, by industry yep. measures um, for, for quite some time. This will be one of the, the last questions I've got for you is, Extrapolate down the road, right? You can see what we've done two years in, kind of how this is built, and, and I think, um, you know, it's done. It's doing a lot of what we hoped it would do, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Back when you were first, you know, conceiving of this. Um, think a decade out. Like, what do you think this is going to accomplish? What do you think this platform is going to enable? Well, clearly, you know, drugging the undruggable and being able to find starting points for targets that no one thought 
should even be attempted. Yeah. I mean, you know, that'll be, uh, you know, one of the stories that, that comes out, hopefully, you know, amazing, you know, therapeutics that are transformative and everything too. But also the, the team that's been assembled, I mean, there's a history too with, uh, with Tom and Ben and others that are in the company have been part of the evolution of, of the chemoproteomic space. And so, you know, I think, you know, Belhara is in the perfect position to kind of write that next chapter as well. Yeah. And, you know, I can't imagine, you know, what, what that actually is, but um, I'm sure, you know, this is the group that's going to figure that out. Yeah. yeah. I think partnerships is going to be part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, that this is a, as we're seeing, this is a platform, as you just mentioned, that's generating all kinds of yeah. really differentiated chemical matter against, you know, proteins of high interest. There's no way that Belhar is going to be able to pursue all yeah. this on our own. So yeah, we already know that. Yeah. yeah. And so the, I think partnerships is going to be a theme of this, the, the enabling deal, which Nantec was a great one to get the company started and it's going extremely well. Yeah. I think there are going to be others like that. And then ultimately, it's moving into you know some of the ambitious targets we talk about internally, transcription factors. You yeah. know th those remain a largely you know there are a few AR and others that have small molecule binding pockets on the protein, mm -hmm. but there are a whole host of other transcription factors that really no one has any traction on. And so yeah. let's see yep. if this platform is going to be able to give us traction on those kinds of targets. And if so you know, the, the kinds of medicines that we could produce here are just going to be transformative for a number of number of diseases. Yeah, I mean, we've been fortunate, I think, and again, kudos to both of you. So many things have fallen into place. So many pieces have come yeah. together, yeah. and not accidentally, right? There's yeah. been a huge amount of work and effort by everybody to kind of make that happen, but it's, it's um, hard not to see kind of all the requisite elements here sure. uh, at, at work. So, um, so thank you both. I really appreciate, you know, both the hard work and the effort that went into getting this going and okay. your continued involvement as board members and strong supporters. It's, it's, uh, it's no small thing that you do for us. Um, so thank you and thanks for spending the time today. It's just yeah. good to get a, take a walk down memory lane. So. Yeah, no, that was great. Thanks, thanks Jeff. Thank you both. Appreciate Likewise. it. All right. Likewise.